I get angry just thinking about it, it makes me mad. Little kids doing drugs, it turns my stomach. That stuff hurts. It stops you from living up to your potential. It holds you back. It hurts the user. It hurts his family. And it hurts his friends. I just want to shake some sense into you kids that are using drugs and thinking about using it. So remember, don't or else. Yeah. Courtney, and you're watching Dante's Boxing Nation. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? So another one gets busted, huh? It's just been reported that Jose Uzcategui has just tested positive for PEDs going into the fight against David Benavidez. This is what David had to say about the situation. He said, this is disappointing, man, but the show will go on. And my fight will still be on November 13th in Phoenix, Arizona. My promoters are looking for a replacement opponent. Got this boy that scared that he messed up a great paycheck when he knew that he got drug tested by Vada. Still decided to try to put this shit in his body. I would have still knocked his ass out even though he was on steroids anyways. But now we move on to the next. Now the good news is they already found a replacement. David, he's going to be fighting against Kyron or Kyron Davis who has a record of 16 wins, two losses, one draw, and six knockouts. It's not the best opponent in the world, but I'm just happy to see David Benavidez return, and I'm happy that finally we have a string of boxing matches coming up in the next couple of weeks. Now, what I will say about Kyron Davis, if you don't know anything about him, is he did manage to get a draw fighting against Anthony Durrell. This is a huge opportunity for Davis. He's in a similar situation that Ugas was in when he fought against Manny Pacquiao. We'll see what Davis can do with this opportunity. Now, assuming that David Benavidez, he gets past Davis, since he's expected to, it's time for David to continue putting pressure on Canelo Alvarez. If I was David Benavidez, I would start even showing up at his fights and trying to force this fight. Because see, this is the thing. Canelo Alvarez is going for all of the belts, but the best and the most dangerous super middleweight in the division is David Benavidez. This is the reason why Canelo didn't want the WBC belt when David had it. As soon as David vacated, well, he didn't vacate, but as soon as he was stripped of the title, that's when Canelo went after the belt. This is the same thing that Canelo Alvarez did at 160, actually 154, when uh, Demetrius Andre was the WBO champion, Canelo was his mandatory. And the champion was calling him out. And Canelo did not want to fight the champion, Andre. He waited for Andre to be stripped of the title. And then he fought against Liam Smith for the vacant WBO title. I'm telling you guys right now, undisputed doesn't mean a whole lot if you're not fighting against the best opponents. I always tell you guys, when it comes to the greats, they're known for who they beat not becoming undisputed or just how many belts they want. Belts mean a lot when you're beating a name that goes with that belt. If Sugar Ray Leonard, if he never fought Tommy Hearns, Hagler, Duran, right? But he moved up to a certain weight class where he beat a whole bunch of no names and became the undisputed champion, he would not be considered as great as he is today, right? And if you really think about it, when it comes to Canelo Alvarez, uh, Andre, Jamal Charlo, and David Benavidez, those right there are his Haglers, his Hearns, his Durans. But speaking of Charlo, I keep telling you guys, I have a feeling that Canelo Alvarez, he might be willing to fight Charlo now because Charlo, he looked so bad in his last performance. And once again, this is usually when Canelo fights guys when they're coming off of their worst performance. So don't be surprised if Canelo decides to fight Charlo. I mean, honestly, I think it would be a smart thing to do. If you are Canelo, it's a smart thing to do. Like I said, after that performance, we don't even know if Charlo is still the same anymore. I mean, we have to see him in another fight to see if that was just a bad performance or maybe he's not focused anymore. Maybe he's on the decline. See, when Charlo, when he fought Karaboff, it wasn't his best performance, but you could clearly still see that Jamal Charlo still looked like Jamal Charlo. He just happened to be in the ring with an elusive southpaw that night. But when he fought against Montiel, to me, that did not look like Jamal Charlo. 
it looked like someone else completely. So this is the reason why I say if Canelo is being smart right now, this is his perfect opportunity to take advantage of this situation before someone else ends up beating Jamal Charlo. But at the end of the day, Canelo is definitely going to have to see this man, David Benavidez, because right now you can say that he's the lineal champion, just like they always call Tyson Fury. That's all I got for now, guys. I'm on to the next one. My name is Chris, and I'm all the way here from Anchorage, Alaska at Scalp Carolinas, and I'm here for my second treatment of SMP. Well, I was sitting at home one day and uh, going over my Facebook page, and they have different, you know, like advertisements popping up, and I saw one for SMP, and I saw some pictures of some guys, you know, a before and after, and I was looking at that, and it, you know, it caught my attention, so I Googled it. SMP, nothing showed up in my area. So, uh, you know, I did a little more research and all of a sudden, Scout Carolinas popped up in the web browser. So I started uh, watching his videos and uh, seeing all the reaction from all the other people. We talked on the phone, we made appointments and everything. I sent him pictures and uh, uh, he looked at them and I was like, can you fix this? And, uh, you know, he pretty much said, no problem. My first session, uh, he made me feel extremely comfortable. Uh, it was almost like I was talking to family. He started and uh, during the whole, whole treatment, we talked and, you know, about our families and our life and, you know, and things that he does and things that I do. And before I know it, the first session was over. When you see someone doing something that they love, uh, as much as I see Enoch Glover love what he does, uh, it shows in his work. I wouldn't point anyone in any other direction but here to North Carolina, Scout Carolinas, to get this done. All right, now check this out, guys. If you're looking to repair eczema scars, burns and bruises, dark spots and blemishes, then this right here is the perfect product for you guys. It's called L.O. Key Face and Body Oil. Athletes and top-ranking boxers, they're also using it after training to reduce swelling, inflammation, and to ease the pain. So get yours today. Go to LODeKey.com, like them on Facebook, and follow them on Instagram.